been long. <laughs> Everybody ready? Are you? <laughs> Welcome. Does anyone not heard me speak before? Anyway, Isn't that fun how you're all on this side? Oh, except you. Oh, remember you. <laughs> um, it just happens. It happens. In events that new people tend to sit on this side of the room. Oh. <laughs> it's actually part of body language. It has to do with how you're perceiving me, which I are using to take in information and lots of other stuff. Does anybody here know about their birth? About what yeah, happened at their birth? Did, did anybody here a C-section? C-sections, raise your hand. You, yeah, it's fine. And then my whole yeah. What's that? C-section means cesarean. Yeah, cesarean. That's what you say here. Anybody born late? Born late? No. Yes. Late. late. Oh, it's like late. Late. <laughs> <laughs> I was like late ever since. Anybody born early? <laughs> Who has a brother? Who has a brother? <laughs> Who has a brother? <laughs> and, and sister? Wow, it's nice distribution. All right. I'm having a daughter in six weeks. <laughs> I believe. I'm guessing because. The name that came to me a couple of days ago was Persephone. Like, oh, oh, Persephone? Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Goddess of Spring, okay. yeah. And some other things. The Underworld. Oh, the Underworld, yeah. <laughs> 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 Good night. <Like, right. laughs> <laughs> well, you can deal with this. <laughs> yes. So let's get started here. I am a body language trainer. I teach people how to take control of their own body language. And essentially, what happens to us over time because we were not taught how to respond to our own body language we we're basically taught to ignore it what happens over time is that our body language ends up controlling us and we end up losing control of our body language and you know this is happening if you're stressed out about things that happened to you a long time ago if your wheels spin about events that happened yesterday or 10 years ago that's literally your body language your unresolved issues imposing themselves on you here today and what I aim to teach you, and it won't happen today in an hour and a half, <laughs> but what I aim to teach my students is how to gain control of the body language so that when the body does have an old issue to bring up, an old unresolved issue to bring up, you can resolve it instead of trying to push it away or instead of worrying about it or thinking there's something wrong with you or whatever else, you just say, oh, my body's sick about this, okay, resolve it and let it go. Yeah. I have a class called the Play Shop. It teaches you why your body does that, why your body holds on to old issues. And there's a simple meditation you can do that every time your body brings up a thought that or an old memory that's stressful, you simply do this quick meditation that takes only a few seconds and it passes away. And it teaches your body that those things in the past that bother you, they're over. They happened a long time ago, they're not actually happening anymore. It trains your body to stop or to discontinue using imagination to amplify things that aren't even happening. Make sense? <laughs> so for me, <coughs> letting go of old issues has had tremendous, had a tremendous impact on my life. I was uh, meant to be dead by 25, I'm 57. Mm -hmm. That's one of the heart murmur that I've mostly been able to get rid of. Um, when I was three, I was told to be gone by, with, by the time I was four. When I was four, I was told to be gone next year. When I was five, I was told, oh, maybe when you're six. I was 13, I finally said, well, your heart murmur's not going away. <laughs> so no physical stress, no, like when gym class in school, I didn't have to run around the field. I could just sit there and watch everybody else exercise because they were afraid that if I got my heart pumping too fast, I'd just fall over and die. Um, it's not a fun way to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> but I met a body language teacher and he had to peel off a couple other layers first, but he finally got down to this layer of um Brian, you spent your whole life like looking looking for love. Like I grew up in a family that was basically a family of alcoholics who didn't talk to each other and there was no real love in the family. There's no connection, no empathy, no I don't remember getting hugs from my parents. Yeah. Um once I realized that, 
and accepted it and be like, oh, that's what's going on. I gotta learn about love and, and open myself up to receiving love just from the world in general, my heartbeat changed. And it used to go boom, boom, psh, boom, boom, psh, and the psh sound was blood leaking out. And you know, that was what was gonna kill me is that I ever had an infection, that blood that was leaking like wouldn't, wouldn't be able to heal. And so the infection would spread. Um, so my heartbeat doesn't do that anymore. Mm. Just goes boom, 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 boom. And really that was all from changing a single thought I had and adjusting my own internal body language. So what I'm going to do today <laughs> is pick a volunteer and read your body language, something that your body is holding on to, and bring the message to you, bring the unresolved issue up to your consciousness. When it comes to your consciousness, your body will recognize that it's no longer happening. Essentially the way our bodies have worked since we were born is that anytime anything happened that we were choosing to not feel or it was too impactful or too stressful, we just psychically push away the feeling. Mm -hmm. What happened is we took it out of time. We all live in two places. We live in time and we live out of time. That might be another workshop, but when you're in time, things matter. The future matters, the past matters, right now matters. Mm -hmm. When you're out of time, you're a little more cosmic. You realize that everything happens at once. You feel mm -hmm. bigger, <laughs> a little more joyous sometimes. Mm -hmm. But time <clears throat> is what we came to experience. <laughs> and in time, there's a thing that happened a long time ago that you didn't want to feel. And what happened was, that took it out of time, so it made it timeless, and made it perpetual for the body. And so the body believes that that thing you psychically pushed away a long time ago, it believes that it's still happening right here, right now, and it wants to resolve it. And that's why it comes into your consciousness. Now, it can come into your mind, you start thinking about, oh, what happened to you when you were five? I was physically and sexually abused when I was five and six years old, and it used to like make me totally afraid of talking to women, Connecting with people, every time I connect with somebody, I was afraid they were going to try to assault me, you know. Um, but once I resolved what had happened, I made it not okay, but I got rid of the charge on it. Now I'm able to talk about it and not get all freaky, like, what could happen to me? It's just images in my mind without charge. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially another way of looking at this is that <coughs> memories that have charge have charge because they're unresolved. When you resolve them, the charge goes away. And the good news is this isn't weeks or months of practice. This is seconds. It takes seconds when you do it correctly. And correctly is what I'm going to show you how to do. <laughs> yay. So, yay. <laughs> um, when we psychically push away a feeling that we don't like, like, you know, because we got fired and we don't know why, or somebody broke up with us unexpectedly, or something happened we just didn't like. When we psychically push it away, it's like taking one end of a rubber band and pushing it far away. And what happens is it creates a bunch of tension in that rubber band. And then you've got tension in your body, your body's trying to figure it out. What I do in this work is I find out what's been pushed away and I bring it back to right here. Yeah. So did anybody see the video I posted in the newsletter? Or YouTube, no big side. So, uh, oh, so that point it. doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so what this looks like is our bodies are basically repositories for trauma, repositories for stress. When they're, you know, like they, they get filled up with stress and trauma, they get filled up with charge. And um, what this work is here is these wing release trainings that I do it's a healing. It feels good to let go of, oh, my mom hated me or, you know, whatever issue mm -hmm. is. That feels really good to let go. But what, that's secondary. The primary purpose of wing release training or being on the table is to learn the relationship between your thoughts and your imagination and your body. And um, as you learn that, as you release things from your body, you start to recognize, oh, every time I feel like I can't get what I want. My shoulder gets tight over here. And once you realize that, when you realize, oh, I'm having a hard time getting what I want, your shoulder relaxes. And then you <coughs> remind yourself, oh, I can have anything I desire. And your shoulders relax. Yeah. So it's about having awareness of what's going on with your body so you can take control of it. 
your body's not your master. It's trying to be, maybe, <laughs> but, but really you came here to be in charge of your body. You came here to learn from your body and, um, I don't want to get too cosmic. Oh, do. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get cosmic, you got to ask our questions. Uh, <laughs> please, can you um, do more cosmic? <laughs> Next question. Any questions about this so far? So there are a lot of healing modalities in the world. I've tried a lot of them. Most of them <clears throat> um, seem to last about two weeks. You get a massage, you get this thing knotted out, and about two weeks later it comes back. Or if you go to therapy to let go of being mad at somebody, whatever, mm -hmm. a couple weeks later you mad at them again. Mm -hmm. um, most healings simply release us from what bothers us. But then ego helps bring that stuff back. You know, sometimes it comes back in a different way. But when you actually receive the message from the body, you actually figure out what that old trauma was that you pushed away, and you just sort of let yourself hear the message and acknowledge it, and then the body doesn't have to hold on to it anymore, um, what happens is your body learns that it doesn't have to hold on to old trauma. It's actually an error. It's a programming error. It's not hardware. It's not something to do with a physical body. It has to do with the way you programmed yourself as an infant. And essentially, when we were born, the change of being born was there's just too much change at once. And that might not have been true 50, 60, 100,000 years ago, but our forefathers had sex with Denisovans and Neanderthals, and now um, human bodies have a hard time giving birth. You know, there's like something about the shape of the birth canal that makes giving birth very stressful on the baby. So that process of change gets us to get, because we don't know why we're being born, that's literally our first trauma. And it sets us up to think that all change is traumatic and that we have to avoid change. And so what happens when an unexpected change happens, a different one happens, so if somebody breaks up with you unexpectedly or you get fired or you crash your car or house burns down, whatever else, um, it, it's too stressful because it's change. And it reactivates that birth trauma. How's that for cosmic and heavy? That was good. Heavy yet? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I tend to get heavy, but I promise we'll get light by it. <laughs> so anybody here uh, done rebirthing? Yes. Yeah. Done rebirthing. Okay. So it's not too stressful for you to do this thing. Yeah. No. Stressful. Stressful. Okay. When you when you say rebirthing, what what do you mean? Conscious I mean going back to the point. Well, right. Birth. Well, yes. So rebirthing is specifically conscious connected breath work. So if you've heard of conscious breathing or mindful breath work, that all comes from uh, a study or modality called rebirthing that was started in California in the 70s. So, um, the founder of rebirthing, Leonard, or Leonard Orr, nutcase, nutcase, <laughs> and which is why rebirthing is not like the biggest thing in the world right now. He is just a bit of a nut. He got maybe a little too full of himself. I'm not really okay. sure, but um, I met him. I, I trained with him. He did. He just came across me. Someone didn't like to communicate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he brought this really amazing thing to the world called conscious connected breathing, which really does move old energy. Um, so rebirthing is one way to handle our old birth trauma, but this is another way, and I find that this way is more effective. So um, what happens in this training is when you when your body releases something, not only do you get the relief of having released something. But you also start to recognize how it's the correlation between your stress you're feeling and the tension in your body. And what you're looking to do is you're looking to learn how to correlate what's bothering you in your mind or in your history with the tension in your body. And when you do, the tension goes away and the stress goes away. Because that rubber band you pushed away the feeling you didn't like, well, the thought stayed here right next to you. It's the feeling that you pushed away, not the thought. 
And what happens is, you, you know, you get these thoughts, but you're not feeling the feeling. And all your body's trying to do is help you put those two together. When you learn to put those two together, they disappear. Like the only reason they exist is that you push that feeling away you didn't like. You, you pushed it out of time, made it perpetual. When you bring them back together, your body will go, oh, this happened 10 years ago. It's not real anymore. As long as it's, when you push something away that you don't like feeling and make it perpetual, your body thinks it's perpetually happening, that is stressful. But when your body recognizes, oh, that's not happening anymore, that happened 10 years ago or yesterday or whatever it is, it just drops it. Your body only wants to deal with things that are real. There's no reason to deal with fake stress. Like you just throw it away. Like, well, that's not real, throw it away, right? This work does not change existing stress levels. If your house is burning down, you'll stress out while your house is burning down. But the next day, you won't have any stress. And that happened to me. I started this work, you know, with my teacher in 1999, learning this stuff. And it wasn't until 2003, 2004 that I actually got it, you know? And he told me to start teaching it. And he still actually told me to teach in about 2000. So 2003, 2004, I finally got it to a place where I could teach it. And I did, but this is so new. Nobody ever wanted to come on workshops. They're like, what are you talking about body language? Whatever. <laughs> my, my flyers have disappeared from coffee shops. Um, <laughs> so what happened is that I moved into a hot springs that was also a healing center. And I started presenting what I do to the public that would come. So in the temple, every couple of weeks, I get to do a song and dance like I'm doing today. <laughs> and people get an amazing benefit. Like I had a guy tell me that, you know, the next day after he, he was the volunteer, he told me he had his best night's sleep in 10 years. Wow. And he told me he'd stop going to his therapist. He to the therapist because he wasn't able to sleep for a decade. Wow. And finally got to sleep. I had another guy who, I mean, his, <laughs> the poor guy, bless him, Jeffrey. His aura was dark, his skin was gray. He was going in for an operation the next day. He thought he was going to oh, die. His you. wife was saying goodbye. I was like, you have to volunteer. Please volunteer. <laughs> and when he got off the table, he got his color back. He was happy. The operation was easy. And he lived for another six years. And he became my best friend for a while. Um, he was one of the first people that I have coded in California in December of 2019. Um, anyway, just to remember Jeffrey. <laughs> so I've had like a lot of amazing, amazing healings happen on the table here, not just from private sessions, but even just volunteers coming up. But that's unusual. Usually, you know, what, what people are ready, you know, what, what I'm able to help people let go of and resolve are the things that our bodies are ready to let go of. Jeffrey was ready. He had given up. He was ready. To, he'll, he would let go of anything to get through the operation. So he was ready for that. And that guy who hadn't slept for 10 years, he'd been working 10 years on it. It's all he wanted to let go of. So it was really easy to do. But most of us, you know, the stuff comes off in layers. Get rid of the stuff. You know, the barista looked at you funny this morning. Okay, let go of that. <laughs> you know, you peel off layers and go to the heavier, heavier stuff. This work, um, What's really nice about it is that when you do resolve the issue that way, when your body does read, when you take the issue, pull it back into time mm -hmm. so that your body recognizes when it actually happened and then the body just lets it go because it's old, it never comes back. This isn't like massage where two weeks later you get tight again. It literally never comes back. And I was here in September and did sessions and then in november when i came back i had people stopping me on the street telling me hey it never came back i don't even remember what i love you like i just feel so great thank you so much um so that's that's the fun things for me now the story i was telling about the hot springs is that the hot springs burning out i mean i wasn't feeling well one day so i went back to our cabin my girlfriend's cabin was when i'm married the cabin saw smoke in the distance and took a nap woke up and the fire was like 200 yards away and the fire captain's telling me you gotta leave man. you know it's crazy i basically gave him the finger and packed my car took 20 minutes put stuff in the car and uh 
drove out, trees on fire on both sides of the roads, and a full uh, mile and a half to get out of the Box Canyon to get, you know, civilization. Trees on fire, and I was one of the last people out of Hot Springs. 250 <laughs> people worked there, 1,000 uh, guests, and I was like one of four people left. <laughs> and uh, it was stressful. It was, the fire was so intense that I drove out, got out the gate, saw Rose. She's crying because I wasn't going to make it out, but she follows me. We, we drove about a quarter mile. I mean, just six blocks, parked our cars, got out of the car, walked a block just to, to watch the, to, the smoke. Yeah. And we were already seeing flames. Whoa. Like I, if I had waited another five minutes, uh, my car wouldn't have made it out. It was, it was really wild. You know, it's, of course, we're like, wow, you're going to die. Oh, oh. But the next day we wake up and there's no stress. It was like, we were like, how come we're not bothered by, how come we're not bothered by losing everything we own? We're like, because it's <laughs> over. Like, that's really weird. We went to the Federal Emergency Management Agency. They had a big like, tent set up and the library, things closed down. I, had, I mean, a couple thousand people from the town trying to get emergency help. And everybody's crying and stressed and telling us had stories about they lost their dog, lost their car, lost their house, all the things they lost. I mean, it was it was just so heavy in the room. It's just like you just feel it, you know, like oh my gosh. And Rose and I were happy. I mean, we weren't stressed. We we're like, oh yeah, we lost our house. What can we do? What can we sign up for? What can we do? And they're like, you lost your house? Give me your ID. <laughs> they didn't believe us because we were the only people in the room who weren't stressed. And it was freaky for us. We didn't understand how impactful the training really was. So what we had to do the next day, we had to go back, was sit in the car for a minute and put on our sad face before going in so they'd believe us. So then two years later, there was another fire. And that fire took out our, our house too. And that was that's the last time we ever lived in a box canyon in California. <laughs> but we drove out of that place. We drove out. And the trees are on fire, and we had to drive all the way down this hill, like half a mile down the hill, 20 miles an hour, really slow to get all the way down. We see the smoke, and then we get down low, and the fire, our houses are on fire, and trees are on fire, and telephone pole on the road. And we're like, oh, shit. We have to go back up and wake up our neighbors who are sleeping up there. So we had to drive back through the fire, go up. We got our cat, too, so it was another good call. Phones were down. That's what happened is the phone, there was a phone line that caused the fire. And of course, the phones are out. We didn't know that. The phone lines the phone caused lines. the fire. Yeah, or the phone lines or the power lines. But whatever happened, the phones weren't working. Mm -hmm. So um, we get up there, got our cat, woke them up, drove back out through the fire, went to my friend Leslie's house. She let us stay in her guest room. And I woke up the next day, open my eyes, and I see, the, I see a tree out the window. And I'm like, why am I? That's great. And I, oh, yeah, there's a fire. So the house burned down. Okay. And I'm like, I can see it. Like literally no stress, no tension in my body at all. And we didn't even bother going to FEMA that time. Like it's not worth the stress. What are they gonna give us a thousand bucks or hundred bucks? Like and to do that, we have to pretend that we're sad. It's not worth it. So that's what happens with this training. As you learn why your body holds on to stress, and when you learn how to pull how to stop pushing the stress away, pull it back in, make it yours, what happens is you're pulling it out of that perpetual no time place, bringing it back into time where your body can recognize when it happened, your body learns to no longer do that. So when Rose and I stress out, we can't push away the feeling that we don't like anymore. Our bodies won't let us. Like we've just learned to just take the stress on, whatever happens. Car broke, okay, deal with it. But this does not change stress levels for if you lose your job, you're going to freak out, right? But an hour later, you're going to be totally okay. Like, it, it doesn't linger. Nothing lingers anymore. That's the joy of this work. So there's two ways to achieve that, to get to that place where your past won't bother you. One is to do table training. It takes about 10 sessions. And you have to pay attention, but it takes about 10 sessions to learn what's happening in your body and to learn you learn to feel in your body how your body has pushed things away and how it pulls them back, and you, you end up being able to do that yourself. And sometimes, I know it took me about six sessions or seven, maybe. Well, I just one day, my friend wanted to open a healing center in Philadelphia when I was living there. I was like, 
Philadelphia doesn't deserve a healing center. And when I said it, I heard it. I felt the tension about it. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I had to let go of all this anger and stuff I had about living in Philadelphia. <laughs> I suddenly felt better about being in Philly. And I was like, oh, you want to go to a healing center? Okay. And he's like, wow, your shoulder went up and down really quick. And I'm like, yeah, it really hurt for a second. <laughs> but he had also done the training, so he knew what, you know, he knew what was happening. The other way is to do my workshop called the play shop where you you understand exactly what happened at birth to create this program that gets your body to push away things you don't want to feel because it's automatic right i mean we just do it automatically if something happens you don't want to feel like, i don't want to feel that push it away you don't have to get on the table if you don't want to do it corporately you can do it intellectually and that's where you learn the meditation every time you get bothered by something in your history you run this little meditation that reminds your body that it's only your imagination and not real it took me 10 years to figure out that meditation <laughs> and it works really really good who's done it who's done the play shop are you practicing it you're doing the meditation a little bit how's it working work? super what and what are the changes that you've experienced since you started <clears throat> the play shop Change you know, I've experienced since I started flesh up living meditation specifically. Yeah. Just much more rapid processing of anything that comes up, actually. Okay. And just being able to distinguish things that aren't real from what actually is real and noticing that nearly everything is just a story that I'm telling <laughs> myself and I don't really need to have anything to do with it. And it's so much better just to be actually be present and relaxed and calm yeah and when something does happen it's like you were just just saying there's like a a flare up where you you just handle it immediately in the moment and you're absolutely okay with that mm -hmm. and then it's gone right yeah and then it wasn't until that second fire that i actually recognized how impactful this training is <laughs> my teacher set me off on this path to learn this and to figure it out and to teach it without telling me what the end result was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so what this end result is that you have a body that just doesn't stress about the past. And if it does stress about the past, you just do this meditation and it goes away. But what typically happens is when you start doing the table training or the workshop, you practice the meditation, your, once your body learns how to let things go and how to pull things out of this timeless place and pull them back into time and, and Find out what's real and let go of what isn't real about it. When your body learns how to do that, it'll do it while you're sleeping. You literally like wake up one morning, and it happened to me several times. You wake up in the morning, you feel lighter. You look noticing more. Like, I like love something last night. I didn't even know what it was. But then right. later you realize, oh, I'm not mad at my uncle anymore for not giving me a present when I was five. You know, whatever who knows what it is. <laughs> but that's the really neat thing is your body can let go and heal before you understand what it's even let go of. Because this training here and the play shop, it works on your subconscious. We're retraining our subconscious and how our subconscious deals with stress. So anybody else want to share like what's happened for them? Have you felt lighter, losing stressful moments? It's okay if you don't like to share. But <laughs> there's only a few people who've done the play shop. So there's a play shop review next Sunday, like to reinvigorate your practice and hear a little more detail about the purpose of the play shop please come next Sunday and if you'd like to learn the play shop while I'm here you can learn it online an hour and a half of video and about an hour or maybe an hour and a half of exercise exercises um, you can do that this week and then come to the play shop review next Sunday and make sure you got it correct and right <laughs> and within a couple months maybe six months on the outside um, your body no longer holds on to stress it just won't. You get fired and your boyfriend breaks up with you and you crash your car and then your dog ran away. Like, well, I gotta eat dinner. Eat okay. dinner and then I'll do it. <laughs> and you know what you do? You just go out and get another job. So when I got fired, so I've been fired. Who's been fired before? <laughs> Am I the only one? No. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. And it's not always our fault. <laughs> I can give you another example that springs to mind actually. Yeah, sure. A couple of months ago, I was laying in bed early evening and I heard some crashing sounds. And the next moment, there's a guy pointing a torch at me, standing in the, the doorway of my bedroom. And I was like, what the fuck? I just said, what the fuck? To kind of scare him away. Uh -huh. And the guy left. 
and someone had broken into my house and so on. I felt perfectly okay. I was like, oh, wow, wow, that could have been a lot worse than I'm perfectly okay. Cool. Wow, I wonder what good will come of this. And loads <laughs> of good things did come out of it, actually. So, oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah. That's a good story, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take anything? You just got scared and left? No, I think. Wow. Well, good on you. That's, that's a good intention. That's strong <laughs> intentions. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, any questions about any of this? I don't script my story, so I kind of go in circles. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you said you couldn't find the course online. Yeah, the play shop. Uh, I've got an online school. Mm -hmm. You can sign up over there. And um, play shops online is a video. It's, it's 15 lessons, and the videos, I think, are five to 10 minutes each. So you just do a lesson. It tells you what the exercise is. You do the exercise, and you watch the next lesson. It's good to do two or three videos a day, sleep on it, do the next few. So it's on your own website? Yeah, you can send it. I mean, I've got the website up on my iPad over there. You can see what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. OK. So any questions about this at all? Any questions about me, my training, history, <laughs> effects, <questions>. secondary effects? <laughs> yes? Um, for example, yes. so I've got an issue going on now that's bothering me. And um, I have a session, and you remove that bit away. Mm -hmm. Does that just mean what's bothering me now is dropping down the level, and it's not being dealt with? No, it hasn't. I mean? So, <laughs> my teacher Patrick was, was born left brain dead. He had no intellect when he was born, and he understood everything through feeling only body sensations. So um, he would look at somebody, and he would just tell if they were being genuine or not, or if they were actually a happy person, or he would just look at somebody he just he could just know everything about somebody simply by feeling what was happening with them when he was nine um well when he was six he, he reset his brother's broken arm by twisting it his mom took him took him both to the doctor and said what happened his brother's arm got x-rayed the doctor said oh it's already been set who did it? it's perfect i can't do something like there's nothing for me to do <laughs> that's when his mom realized he was a healer because until then he was just like somebody on the spectrum that she had to like raise you know she realized he was a healer she started driving around the, he, he was a native american driving around the, the reservation to healing some people on the weekend and he, he told me he's like his mom would drive him somewhere and he'd look at somebody and then he would he could just tell like oh there's something going on in their liver and he would push their liver and like there'd be a gurgling sound and that'd get better <laughs> so but he my experience with patrick is he would wherever you had tension in your body he would just he would go in there and find out what the stress was that you were holding this and man i'll get so ungrounded i walked out of a session once like i got in my car and i was not me i, I mean i was the car i was the neighborhood i was the experience of driving i was no longer a noun i was a verb and i sat there like okay i'm getting around <laughs> and i sat in my car about 20 minutes trying to come down get back in my body and, and be able to function so what I've learned. Excuse me. What did he work on? Uh, solar plexus, mm -hmm. ankles. He, he would work on any any muscle in the body. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll tell you my healing story with him in a minute if you like. What I've learned over time is that what we're ready to let go of is in our shoulders. That's why we do this when we're stressed. We feel the weight on our shoulders. Those are things that we're consciously aware of that are ready to be let go of. The tension that we have other places like further down the body those are buried deeper <laughs> and harder to pull out and if you do pull out, you feel really ungrounded like you weren't really ready to let them go of that mm -hmm. what and this took me a decade to figure out um when we let go of stuff out of the shoulders it frees us up and we're no longer stressed we feel great but then this older stuff that was buried deeper it bubbles up to get let go of and then you get another session, you let go of that. And every time you peel off a layer, you learn a little bit more about how your internal body language works until pretty soon when you feel stressed, you just, you touch it and you go, oh, what's this? And then you get a picture in your mind of, oh, that's, you know, my dog running away when I was a kid or whatever. And then you literally feel your spleen relax and you feel anger melt away and you just feel better. That's things you can learn to do for yourself. Um, the session I had with Patrick, my first session, he, he liked to wear taps 
Oh. And so he would like click his heels like the Wizard of Oz or you know like Dorothy. <laughs> and he would walk around the table and just he would go, uh-huh, mm-hmm, uh-huh. And then he'd like sitting going, what's he seeing? What's he looking at? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and then he like stood over me like this and, and waited until I looked in his eyes. And he said, Brian, look, you know, and I looked at his finger and he, he went like this and my soul was like, oh, bang. <laughs> he said, the first time you ever asked a girl on a date, did she laugh in your face? And this picture came up with this girl, Kara, in seventh grade, laughing in my face when I asked her to go to the movies. And I was like, I, I didn't want to breathe. I was like, ah, oh, but like it went away. As soon as my body realized, wait, that happened in seventh grade. You know, like it, it just went away. My solar plexus, my entire body just relaxed. I got the smile on my face. I was like, yeah, that happened. <laughs> that session was like eight minutes long. That, and, then, and then I forgot about it. And that was like two in the afternoon. At six o'clock in the evening, my friends call and say, Hey, do you want to go to the bar? I'm show me the bar. So I go there and I get a beer. This girl starts talking to me. I just talk to her. Pretty soon I've got four women talking to me. <laughs> and, and they're all laughing at my jokes. We're having fun. <laughs> and I suddenly realize, holy shit, I'm not shy anymore. I have been shy since seventh grade until that moment, uh-huh. unable to approach women to ask them for a date, totally in fear of girls, totally always feeling shame, you know, when a girl looked at me. I had dates. But they were because people come and say, hey, Carla really likes you. You should ask her out, you know? <laughs> it's okay if she asks you out. And you're like, okay, I have to go after school behind the shed. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it really took a lot for me to, like, feel brave and feel confident. Like, okay, she's not going to laugh in my face. Mm-hmm. But it totally changed my life. It totally changed my life. And it was amazing. But, you know, I was pretty... I, I wasn't ready to let go of that. It felt really weird. So when I was talking to those four women, I realized I wasn't shy. I had to go home. I had to go home and process the fact that my life was totally different. I couldn't hang out and ask one of them on faith. There was no way. I was too ungrounded. I was just loopy. <laughs> but so, you know, what I have learned is take things out of the shoulders, let the other stuff bubble up, and then we stay grounded. You never feel loopy because the stuff that comes out of your shoulders is stuff that we're ready to let go of. That's why it's there. Yeah, it's not going to be that. Who's not seen it before? That was you, right? With you. So um, I'm I'm live streaming right now to my school. I don't know if anybody's oh, watching it, but nice. we are live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyone who volunteers. You could be on the live stream. I don't even. So you, you, I want someone who's never seen you before. I've yeah, never seen welcome. you before. Huh? I've never seen you before. I only met you yesterday in, in really? the club. Really? Yeah. You didn't see me in November? No. no. Okay. <laughs> we'll work on you. Yes. I'll work on you. I'll work on you at the hub, though. At the studio. When? Huh? When? When? Tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Helen. Helen. Would you stand right here? There's one. Okay, I'm gonna write a few things on the board. Don't look at them, okay? Wait until I'm done. Gorgeous. Shocking, I thought it happened. Jeffy went and got the pen. <laughs> Oh. Oh gosh. <laughs> Ella, does that spell right? Okay, that's good. So, uh, just how are you feeling in your body? How does your body feel? Okay? Okay. All right, good. Not brilliant, but not bad. Not brilliant, not bad? Yeah. Are you married? Am I fast? Have you been before? Yeah. I was very fast. Hmm? I was very fast. Um, So I'm going to write something on the board. I just want you to tell me how impactful it is to you. 
So if it's ruining your life, it would be a 10. Don't look. Oh. <laughs> if it's ruining your life, it would be a 10. If it really doesn't bother you, it's a zero. So if it's medium, you know, you give it a five. Like that. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, so this is two things. We'll do this today. This will be fun. So do you have a hard time saying no to people? Okay. Someone says, hey, can you help me move tomorrow? Yeah, I'll seven. Yeah. Before you can think about yeah. What your schedule is, maybe you have time or yeah, energy. Yeah, but yes. Oh, I've got to check on that one. Yeah. yeah. So, as far as your ability to say no to people, it's getting better. It's getting better. Mm -hmm. And what is it right now? Is it zero? Doesn't bother you, or you just can't say no all the time? That would be a ten. Yeah, probably a five. A five. Yeah. So there's a related issue. It's called um, pleasing people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it used to be a terrible thing. So it used to be a 10. You'd, you'd worked it down yeah. to like what, eight, seven? Five. Five, really? Yeah, so five. You're good. <laughs> you're good. <done. laughs> so, what we're going to do, we're going to get you on the table. Okay. I'm going to look to see what you're holding in your shoulders that would cause loads. you loads. Great. So, that would cause this. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you can tell me if you still feel these issues as okay. much, but they're still five. Okay. Okay. So, okay, yeah. so the left one as well. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, on the table with your ankles off up here. Ankle from the end. Yeah, just off the end. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. that look like? Yeah. How do your knees feel there? From the knees? Yeah. <coughs> All right. Drop your shoulder. Well, you're ready to let this go, huh? <laughs> That's what happens when we're actually like working on ourselves. The body's like a little more ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Does it? Uh, yeah, it's right here. Does it ever feel like you're not allowed to get what you want? Yeah. Yeah. Feel it. Feel it. That's good. Feel it. Let it. Fall into time. When you were young, were you made to feel ashamed for okay. what you want? Yeah. Feel your flat top shoulder? That feel flat around the table? Yeah. Yeah, good. Top shoulder. So, but the really fun thing about this work is that when you actually feel it, it's the last time you ever have to feel it. Yeah. You know, like if there's a really specific thing, you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta feel what up. And we feel it, and the next day you're like, oh yeah, I'll do And then you forget even what it was. When we actually let go of an issue within a few days or a week, we don't even remember what it was. Am I out of? I'm just trying to see, but I, my head doesn't turn. So, oh, uh, am I in view? Is he in there? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. He's in, yeah. Was that your mom that gave you a hard time? Sometimes. Sometimes? Not a lot. My dad. Your dad? Your dad make you feel ashamed? Sometimes. Sometimes. Is there a specific time? That one. Feel it. Just feel your muscle. So the answers to the questions are for you. You don't have to say them out loud. Mm -hmm. Did you think of the time? Does that feel flat around the table? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. What's that? Well. <laughs> So this would be the other side of that same coin. So this isn't about like what you receive from another person, like feeling shame because of what some, something somebody else said. This is more feeling wrong, like based on your own your own choice. You ever feel like you, you made the wrong choice? Mm -hmm. okay. So the good news is that happened a long time ago. It doesn't need to affect you anymore. Feel that? There you go. You're done with that one. Stuff for platter. Yep. You go swing your legs off the table. Stand up for everybody. Wow. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
feel a little lightheaded. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to start getting pain in your hands too. So it's adrenaline that holds tension in our muscles. When your muscles relax, the adrenaline oh. flows back into your bloodstream. Oh, yeah, it's starting to work on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, how do you feel right now about saying no to people? Do you feel safer? Buckles. <laughs> <laughs> and do you feel like do you feel the need to please people nope. anymore? <laughs> so is it a one or a zero or one? Oh, a one for One for both. Okay. Yeah. Where's that? <laughs> you look much better. Yeah, you look much better. More relaxing bodies. So if we do the flow out of it. <laughs> Can you explain like the ship for us? <laughs> so if that's the thing, the first time you do it, you're not sure what happened. But as you repeat it, you start to get it. You start to recognize, oh yeah, I felt that thing over there and then it came in and and then you can do it on your own. Just like I said, you just like start to feel like, oh, what's this? And then you start to ask yourself, hey body, what's this message you're holding for me? But it takes a little practice. Well, wait till you wake up tomorrow. You wake up tomorrow and be like, oh my God, brand new day. Be like, those flowers, I never saw those flowers out there before. I must confess, I'm doing breath work. Oh, okay, good. So I've actually released quite a lot of trauma. Yeah. 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 When that doctor told me I'd be dead by 25, so I was 15 when the cardiologist finally said you'll be dead by 25. That's when I committed to my spiritual path. So I gave up chasing girls, really gave up thinking about owning a house one day or having any kind of life. I just wanted to figure out spirituality and my immortality and how to heal my heart and everything else. This has been, I first met Patrick in 96. So it's been 28 years of practice to be able to do that. And when I, when I started 28 years ago, it would have taken me two hours and you going through a lot of stress to figure that out and let it go. So um, wow. don't, don't, the magic happens quickly. <laughs> and uh, are you coming to the event tomorrow? Um, I didn't know about it tomorrow, but I've got a session booked with you on Tuesday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So Tuesday, we'll just take it to the next level. And then you let me know like what's happened since today. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Any questions about what you saw there? I know it happened really fast. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to trust it happened so fast. So like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> so um, what 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 you know, what was it about Helen's posture that led you to kind of go, oh, these are the messages, or is it just some kind of intuitive thing? Or is there something that you see that makes you go, Oh, this is what do you know because you're reading body language? Right. I mean, it's, so I probably worked on 1200 people and there's just there are patterns that we all share so whenever you know all people pleasers have similar body language and i'm just going to recognize it what is that what do you see hmm? what do you see uh you have to become an intern to learn this. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some things my teacher told me you know um you just shouldn't, you shouldn't know, I don't know. You shouldn't know that until you're ready. <laughs> well, no, because otherwise, no, it's really, it's not healthy to point at people and say, oh, you're a people pleaser. Oh, we look to you, know? you, you are. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm able to identify and I'm confident and comfortable calling people out on their issues because I also know how to get the issue to leave quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I would never like walk them some, oh, you're a people pleaser. Come mm -hmm. see me someday. <laughs> 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 It's not fun being triggered, and it's not fun triggering other people. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Can I ask why you why you put the, the feet off the table? Well, on this table it doesn't really work, but on most massage tables, 
when our feet are on the table, then our um, the behind our knees doesn't touch. Um, and then it feels like we can hyperextend. Mm -hmm. It actually is a distraction. Mm -hmm. I feel like even if we're not consciously aware of it, it's a distraction to the body. The body thinks like it's going to get hurt, maybe. We put the ankles off the table, then the knees are flat on the table, and then the body's more relaxed. Right. Mm -hmm. so it's a good check. If you're a, a massage therapist, it's a good thing to do to your clients. Get their ankles off the table, and they'll just they'll relax a lot faster. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a couple things. <laughs> there's only two things I need on the massage table for this work, and one is the ankles going off the table, which doesn't work with this one really because there's a lip, but the other is. Um, you need a, la a ladder to get first. I know it's a little. Oh, you can drop <laughs> Yeah, I can drop that. But there's um a skinny table. People feel like their arms are going to fall off. They have to hold their arms up on the table, yeah, and yeah. that actually occupies too much mm -hmm. mental space, and they can't actually. It's harder for me to do the work when the when the body's worried about arms falling off the table. So that's why it's. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, nobody needs to hear that maybe. Anybody else like to volunteer? We can do another one. Okay, I'll take you. What me? Yeah. Well, actually, me. No, not you. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you are. Just I not have I have issues with rejection. Okay. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, there's some comedy there. What? I said you don't have issues with comedy. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. <laughs> 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 uh, you know what? I'm going to skip this part. Yeah. Right, we'll skip that part. So, the way to read, what's your name? Sarah. Sarah. Okay, Sarah. So, the way to read body language is to notice how you feel when you tune into Sarah. So, tuning in just means putting your attention on her. Okay? And it means, you know, letting, letting her information come to you. So, notice how you feel while you're looking at her right now because then you're going to check in after she's done. And see the ship, feel the ship, right? So notice how it feels to look at Sarah right now, because you're gonna look at her again when we're done and just see the difference or feel the difference in your own mind. Okay. So we're not putting anything on the board, but what I put on the board pretty much nailed you before, right? Can't perfection. say no. Do you mean the perfectionist? Perfectionist? Yeah. 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 I was yeah. Okay. And people pleasing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More as I've got older. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this work idea, it's not like massage where you just get to lay there and then like let the healing get you know happen to you. It's training. Which means you have to pay attention, right? You get to listen. You have to like actually answer the questions and pay attention to what's happening in your own body. If you just lay there and and hope that you heal, um, even if you do let something go, it won't give you the benefit of learning how your body language works. So this is definitely a participatory event. It's not falling asleep while Brian works on you. Make sense? That wasn't just for you though. <laughs> oh. oh. Are we? You're an only child? I've got two half brothers. Two half brothers. Are they younger or older? Oh, older, okay. That just makes one brother. <laughs> <laughs> Did you show up feeling like you couldn't do? Like you just couldn't do what they could do, whether it's riding a bike or climbing a wall or not conscious, no, not conscious. Of it. You never felt disadvantaged compared to them. I know. Oh, that's good. That's cool. yeah. Your parents let you do whatever they did. They gave me a lot of freedom. They did. Were you allowed to do what your brothers did? Yeah. Okay. Could you do what your brothers did? Or did you, did you fail trying? There it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. Okay. 
Did you fail at being a tomboy? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, feel that shoulder. There you go. That feels like on the table. Yeah. Yeah, be good. So what we're removing from your body is like residual unconscious <coughs> competition. <coughs> <laughs> I never felt like it'd be better than other people. Yeah. So did that start with competition with your brothers? Not consciously. Not consciously. More at school. That's cool. Say I am enough. I am enough. Feel that muscle. Oh, that's really good. Thank you. You didn't think it'd be so effective, did you? Oh, that's real. Yeah. It could be them. Yeah. Ready to stand up? Okay. Legs off that way. Wow. Wow. You got a sparkle back. I hit you on the sparkle. <laughs> I was really curious to see what would come. I know. <laughs> and, oh, it's so nice to release, isn't it? It's just so nice. You look so different. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. I'm comfortable yeah. with yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look a lot more at ease. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is watching online, thank you too. That was that was me. So this is what happens at a wind release party. If you'd like to experience it yourself, there's one happening tomorrow at the Frequency Medicine Center, and then one happening in this room next Saturday. And then we're also doing this in Taunton on Sunday. So if you'd like to come to Taunton, it's happening there as well. Um, the other events happening are if you remember, there's a member event next Friday night in here. And what happens at that event depends on who shows up and what the questions are and everything else. But the table will be here and everything will be here that you might need. And then Sunday is the play shop review. So if you do the play shop, if you've done the play shop, or if you do it this week online, come to the review, get your questions answered. <coughs> when you practice the play shop every day, which simply means when something bothers you, you just you just run this little meditation the thing bothering you will go away and you'll be reminding your body to cut it out <laughs> you'll remind your body that what it's running is just a dumb program that you don't need anymore. and that has the same effect as doing cable training in that you just wake up in the morning and you won't be mad at your brother or your uncle or your mom or the teacher in third grade or whatever else <laughs> You just wake up and you'll feel lighter. You might not even know what you let go of. Um, within three to six months, stress won't attach itself to you anymore. <laughs> and that's the, it's an amazing freedom. It's an amazing freedom. Yeah. And, you know, I got uh, assaulted in November. Like this guy, like, pushed me into the wall and threatened me. And it's like, a younger guy, a stronger guy, a bigger guy, and just making fists and asking me where I want to get punched. Totally stressful. Like, oh my God, my fast beat. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh -huh. 
So I ran out to the sidewalk where there were witnesses so he wouldn't do it, you know. But um, and? an hour later, I was fine. Like, but what happened? I don't know. He pushed, well, he pushed me in the wall and hurt my neck, which still bothers me, but he didn't punch me. But what happened was an hour later, it didn't bother me. It was over. I mean, the neck injury bothers me, but the stress of him coming at me is gone. Just like the stress of having a heart murmur and maybe dying soon. Come on. It's like it all just sort of goes away and let life unfold. The fun thing about being both in time and timeless is that who meditates? And so meditate can find that timeless place, right? Fall out of time and everything's sort of available to you. The problem is that there's an unconscious aspect to that timelessness place. And that's where you've stored your old stress. So, you know, the beauty of this work is that we're taking things out of the timeless place, bringing them into the place where there is time, where we care about time, so that our body goes, oh, that's not happening anymore. And just let it go. Hmm. So I repeat myself a lot because this is new information for most of you. Repetition helps get it in. <laughs> And uh, any questions? You've got a question? Do you have a question? Yeah, you. No, you with the cute hair. You. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, I do have a question. Sorry, but um, you have done a short hypnotherapy course. Um, I'm very interested in the difference between thoughts and feelings or emotions. And I wonder how would you define a feeling? Given the body, is it is it something not quite in the body? Is it in the etheric? You know, how would you how would you describe it? Well, when I say feeling, I mean body sensations. You do. I, I fully mean body sensations. That includes emotions. <laughs> feeling so anger, that's part of your body language. Right? You're feeling love, that's part of your body language. Fear. So if somebody has a bad experience. You're saying that the feeling associated is. A sort of echo of that within the body somehow feeling within the tissue a sort of memory right it's a cellular memory so uh, a car accident say you get in a car accident and it sort of wake up and you're in an accident like oh my gosh what happened right yeah i don't want to feel this or, or the pain we do it automatically you know you feel pain in your body and you try to push the pain away take aspirin or drug or whatever. push the pain away get it away we are pushing away the, the body sensation can't push away the thoughts I think it's an emotion, though. Right? No, you think an emotion is the same in a way? The reason that's a difficult question is that emotions turn on thoughts. Yeah. You I start feeling so love, and the mind kicks in. Oh, what am I in love with? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you're mad, if you're afraid of something, you start spinning your wheels about the thing you're afraid of. So it's it's tough at first to identify feelings. Like, what am I feeling? Well, I'm feeling, you know, happy about. Driving my car. Well, no, that's a thought. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so do you have like an automatic tendency to translate sensations into a verbalization? Right. And that that we do that is actually part of why our body does what it does. Mm -hmm. We tend to jump into our head or jump into our mental side, jump into our intellect to get to feel safe from those body sensations. <laughs> we jump into the intellect. So what we're doing here is we're healing our feeling side, which is really the left, left brain is intellect, right brain is feeling side. So we're healing sort of like the circuits in our right brain so that we don't have to jump into our mind all the time to figure things out. I don't have to think about Sarah <laughs> to find out, well, we didn't write it up there, but I didn't have to think about anything to write this song about Hildegard. I said, I feel it in my body. I confirmed it by looking at her body language but my the information I get comes from how I feel. And, and like when I'm up here right now, my mind is off. I have no idea what I'm going to say. I, I, like I literally, literally I just open my mouth and start talking. Even when I'm working on people, I'll like open my mouth and start talking before I even know like what's going to come out. Yes. So you made, a, 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 is there a distinction between what's kind of held in the right shoulder and what's held in the left shoulder? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, for, I mean, you did mention it, but I just at the time I didn't take it in, so I'm interested in that now. 
it's about 90% of us, or maybe a little bit more, are female and receiving on the left side, and male and giving on the right. So when someone's like this, right, it's an issue with receiving. Someone's like this, it's an issue with doing. But you know, body language is super impactful. What's your name? Your name? What's your name? Lynn. Lynn. So Lynn, if I asked you what you're doing after the event tonight, do you want to spend time with me? Like it feels pretty innocent right now, right? But if I approach you and I say, hey, after the event, do you want to go hang out? <laughs> right? I mean, you know, they're having total grief, right? I mean, like, body language, right? Hey, do you want to go into business with me? We got a great idea. We can make a lot of money. Do you have any money? <laughs> so, so, yes. Um, what if it's past the shoulders? Because, like, just say it's in the head somewhere or in the eyes or the ears or whatever. Mm -hmm. if it, I mean, if it's, if it's gone past this point, what does that mean? Well, you're thinking about it too much, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, you know, I've, I've been trained to work with every muscle in the body. It's just that I've learned that when I, when I do shoulder releases, it's quick. it's quick, it's easy, because that's the stuff that we're ready to let go of, and people get relief, and you stay grounded. <laughs> so Hildegard, Helen, and Sarah, do you still feel grounded? Yeah. You feel normal. Totally There's nothing in you. Yeah. You changed a lot, but you still feel normal and like cool. Yeah. But man, I tell you, like Patrick's students, we'd walk around for a week going, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 I'd be like, what's wrong with my back? It's all loose. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's so it's just like a rule I have. I can only work on shoulders because that's just the way it works best for me and for my clients. But if someone comes to me because they have this issue of, you know, if they think they're dying or whatever else, of course, I'm going to work on any part of the body that's going to help. If someone comes and says, look, I know you only want to work on my shoulders, but I've got this thing on my liver. Like, if i got to get an operation, if I don't get rid of this, I'm going to muddle the rock. And yeah, I'm going to work on the liver. Like, I'll help you out. But if people show up just for general healing and general, I want to feel better. It's always only on the shoulders. And it's not, it's not difficult. So the reason your body has the tension, it's, it's because when you were an infant, you just didn't know what to do with this feeling that you didn't like. The first feeling we have that we don't like is generally, you know, getting squeezed through the birth canal, mm -hmm. going out in this bright world that's dry and cold it's 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 like it gets us to hold our breath like, oh what's happening to me and what happens is we file it away to figure it out later and that's what we've done with all our stress oh i'll just deal with this later push it away and deal with it later the good news is now you can deal with it later really easy yeah you were you're waiting until you met me to figure out how to do it really quickly <laughs> and um you know, when, when you do the training and you learn how to, when you're in, really it's your subconscious, when you teach your subconscious how to, how to handle stress, how to live through stress and just get through it, it's a lot easier. It's so much easier. Like I said, our house burned down. And the next day we were like totally getting no stress in our body. We had this stress of, okay, we need to find a place to live. We got to find a place for our cat. We can't live with my friend and her two dogs for too long. I mean, it was like stuff to deal with, but it was all stuff that was in our face right here, right now. Like we actually have to like get a place to live. We didn't care about that our house burned down. We didn't care anymore about the stuff that we lost. I can give you another example actually that I remember. Yeah. I was in the kitchen. I just made a, <coughs> a pint of tea and the glass slipped in my hand and I poured boiling tea over my hand. <coughs> but there was no shock. I just observed what happened and walked over to the sink and ran the cold water in it. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm so cool. I'm not shocked that that happened. I mean, it, you weren't very present, otherwise you wouldn't have done that. It was kind of funny. Yeah. I wasn't like beating myself up for having been unconscious for a while. It was, just, right. it was all very, but there was no shock at all. It was all just, oh, yeah, I think I'd better put that under the tap. In. Right. And it healed quicker as well, I think. I think it, I think because of that, quicker, that's yeah. my sense of it. The other aspect, you know, aside from not holding on to stresses anymore, change becomes a lot easier. 
So you get fired, like, oh, you know what? Okay. <laughs> you know, and you just go get another job. So before when I was having, you know, when I got fired, I was like two weeks in my head, like, where am I gonna get another job? What am I gonna do? Oh, like, oh, nobody likes me. I'm not good enough to like work anywhere. Nobody wants. You know, there's all these like crazy stories. But now when something happens, I'm just like, okay, go find another job. Do <coughs> something else. Like it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Comments? <laughs> no. <laughs> Fair enough. So. If y'all are members of the college, which you can sign up kind of if you haven't yet, um, you can come to the member event next Friday, and we'll do some of this for you know anybody who likes. There's also I'm doing sessions all week. If you'd like to do a session with me, you can talk to Kira Shabon at Frequency Medicine Center. And next Friday, and in two Mondays, I need guinea pigs for my interns who are learning how to do this. So if you're willing to have an intern practice on you. <laughs> like let me there Siobhan know and we'll schedule a few for that for next week. Yes. I'll, I'll come on uh, and be guinea pig. Oh, okay. We'll we'll make a list. Oh he's allowed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions about anything? I don't know how to make pies, but I can answer lots of questions. Yes. How do you think um, it works? I mean, in terms of PTSD, if somebody has a traumatic experience, um, and what would normally happen if they if they hadn't done the play shop um, is that they would experience PTSD, or you know, something um, if they were attacked, for example, mm -hmm. they might relive that experience, or if they in a war zone they might relive the experience of that trauma mm -hmm. <coughs> because the brain is trying to process something so are you saying that if like you don't you wouldn't get ptsd anymore if you were if you mastered that, that play shop um meditation whatever like you're saying you know your, your house is on fire but you you've kind of mastered it's almost like you've mastered that the um because PTSD is, oh, I suppose PTSD is pushing things yeah, away, isn't it? Triggered. So it has to yeah. come back. The, the, and and the only, yeah, the only issue it. is the heavier the thing is that we push it away, mm. the kind of more difficult it is to to let it land. Mm -hmm. you know, right? So because people have flashbacks, don't they? PTSD is like they have flashbacks. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that I, doesn't happen if you. What is that? What you're saying? In, well, I, you oh, know, in theory, <laughs> in theory, what I'm saying is someone who does does the program. And completes it and graduates the play shop and does their 10 sessions on the table that if they had PTSD in the past <coughs> wow but, um so i'm interested in training people who are like into spiritual weight <laughs> i really don't want to be the guy who heals ptsd people because it's really stressful like believe it or not i enjoy teaching workshops i only do this so that you know what i'm talking about so then to give me credibility but um what do i want to say here i i i've had students before who had win the war zone i had a student who was in iraq and none of the things that happened to him in iraq ever came up in his sessions it was like compartmentalized so well that mm -hmm. what was coming up was stuff from his childhood you know and it always surprised me and he and i talked about and i said look if you really get your training done you can like because he recognized the same thing he did he said oh this will help great with ptsd and i said great get trained and take it back to your comrades and you know do it i just don't want to be there mm -hmm. did you do that No, okay. this is like very few people I mean, are willing to do what I do. <laughs> you're you're interested in what she holds up, asking about yourself and like, yeah, yes. So, like, I don't stress out about girls anymore like I used to. Like, I have PTSD from my girl laughing in my face. I just couldn't talk to girls, right? I mean, I just, and now I like, whatever, I don't care. I want to go out, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but I'm not, you know, like. It's a different order of magnitude when you're in a war zone dealing with bodies and bombs. And it's just a different order of magnitude. Yeah. I assume it works. 
I've not been approached. But like I said, like I enjoy being in the spiritual healing community. I don't really want to be in the military community. Patrick, no, interact with that. Patrick, his work in this area is a small part of what he did. He worked with government, he worked with terrorism squads, he worked with snipers, he worked with all kinds of people. He worked with snipers doing what? Huh? What did he do with the snipers? He taught him how to aim better. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Patrick would be. Patrick, he told me that the reason he worked with government is he was trying to make it softer and take away the hard edge. Because I, mean, I don't know how it is here but in America, the government is like, they have a monopoly on violence and they are proud of it, <laughs> you know, oh. and it's um, it's stressful. So he he worked with the FBI and just to help people. So there's second, there's like tertiary benefits to this work and you know, tertiary, so there's second, the, there's primary benefits is that you feel better. Mm -hmm. The secondary benefit, you know, is that you learn how your body language works and get control of it. There's this third benefit in that you stop projecting and start taking in more. And um, so the work he did with the government was teaching people how to be comfortable listening. Because like these FBI agents who go to someone's house on an investigation, if they're not listening, they've already made up their mind that this guy's guilty and they're going to treat him poorly. And you know what I mean? There's like all this stress that happens. So he was teaching them to sort of show up assuming innocence and to really listen and to take things in before getting all heavy. That was kind of why he wanted to work with the government. Because I, I got mad when I found out he was like, because he worked on Bill Clinton, he worked on like the Princess, the King of Sweden. He's like, <laughs> do table training on these really famous people. He told me the reason he did it was just to make the whole planet a better place. Because if those people are relaxed and not stressed and they don't project onto us, you know, our life is easier when their life is easier. Oh, it's easier. It's similar. Yeah. So, um, so I, he didn't train me in those things that he did okay. too much. I mean, I know how to spot when someone's carrying a weapon. Yeah, you can I can always spot yeah. the undercover cops at the airport or whatever. I can always tell. <laughs> Do you want to know how to do that? I'll tell you. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> when people have a weapon, they always lead with it. So it's like to put it in between you and them. So they'll walk a little bit forward. Like if they're carrying it here, it'll be like that. If a woman's got a, a gun in her purse, she'll carry the purse in front of her. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, so you see. But you'll see, like you know, if there's a gun down here, they'll favor it. You can just. As you do this work, your mind relaxes, you start taking yeah. more information, and you can start to feel where people's attention is. And so if you look at somebody and you realize though half of their attention is on their ankle, well, it's because they have something in their ankle. Yeah. You know, so body language isn't a snapshot, it's a movie. You kind of have to look at the whole picture and like, well, he's got all his attention on his ankle and he's looking around like he's observing people. Mm -hmm. He's probably a cop. He's probably got a gun down there. Yeah. But I've also left. I left the hotel lobby once because there was a woman with a gun in her purse and kind of looked around like I couldn't tell if she was like looking for something to shoot or if she was afraid and trying to keep herself safe. Like she was just so anxious and like ready to pull that gun out of her purse so fast. I'm like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but that's <coughs> when our bodies are stressed, that charge that those memories have. That charge, you know, that that old memory has that you don't like that that emotional charge. It's actually attention. It's attention mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you don't have available to you right here, right now, because you've mm -hmm. used it to push away that feeling you don't like. Mm -hmm. And when that feeling comes back and it just gets released, that charge returns or converts back into attention for you to have right here, right now, which means you notice more information. Mm -hmm. Yes. You describe it as a charge. I, I call it a hook. Is that the same sort of thing? Like when you've released the hook, if you've got a hook to something that's got, well, I've got a personal hook, which I'll tell you about when I see you on the nose. You mean like an attachment? <laughs> yeah, an attachment, an emotional attachment. I'd say the charge is, like the charge would be the anger. Because the you haven't dealt with the, or haven't allowed the original feeling, like you've said. The, right. when, you, when you recall that event, uh -huh. you get this. <laughs> right, that's the charge. 
Yeah. You call it the hook. The hook. It's the okay. same difference, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But once you've kind of dealt with that and released it, you can think about that thing, but you don't get the feeling that goes with it anymore. Right. Is that what you're kind of saying? That's exactly it. Like I can tell you that I was sexually abused, physically abused when I was five, six years old, and I don't have any charge in my body. Yeah. So ten you years think ago. About it and think, 20 years okay, ago, yeah, 20 years ago, I would never say that to anybody, let alone to a group of strangers. Like, my God, people know that about me. What is it? Well, that's, well, <laughs> but I just don't care. Like, if there's no charge, there's no, like, yeah. I don't care if I walk down the street and they're like, hey, there's guys of sexual abuse, leave a spot. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, there's no charge. There's no, yeah. it's just, it's just a picture. Because you've dealt with it, it's not yeah. got that initial attachment. Right. The the beautiful thing is I didn't have to deal with it intellectually. I didn't have to think about it, work it out, make it okay. All I had to do was release it, which yeah. which meant letting my body know that it happened a long time ago and isn't happening right here, right now. Yeah. But I was like, oh, thank God. That's what I wrote <laughs> with the breath work with, some, with something mm -hmm. um, to me. Um, and I feel like I'm getting somewhere with it because I can think about it now and I'm not getting the... Yeah, yeah exactly. It gets away the knot out of your stomach and the emotional charge. Yeah, it's it all kind of happens at once. Yeah, yeah. Brian. Yes. Sorry, you can. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to say, uh, do you see? Do you know about um, EMDR? It's a kind of tapping. No, no. no it's, it's like a kind of therapy where you um, make a vision of a trauma that happened, uh -huh. and then you can either have like a uh, what. It's a bit like a hypnotism. Oh, okay. And you um, like look at a picture of what happened, uh -huh. and you learn to observe that, and just for a time, and be able to control it and put it away and get it out again. And it seems a bit similar what you do in a sense. I don't know. But you don't know about it, so mm, yeah. <laughs> because it's like it. you get you you learn that that thing was something that that is not like hold like a game like right. holding into you. But that it's something that did happen in the past, and that you can breathe through it and accept that it, it's something that you can you can then process it basically when you've yeah. done that, rather than that holding was, it in a mem in a sort of library in your brain, as it were. Right. It, it seems similar in a way. It's similar. What's different, probably, is that we're connecting yes. the body. Yeah. I so you got to hold like sense. where in the body is it being held, and without that component, we end up thinking too much about the thing. Yeah. Well, we have to resolve it over and over. No, I'll come back next week and resolve it again. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, you yeah. know, this is mind body connection. Yes, it's much more body related what you're doing. Yeah. But I, I think there's some kind of similarities. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it's, it's almost like what I was witnessing was the memory in the body is connecting, isn't it, in that mm -hmm. moment in time? Yeah. And that's the reconnection, the reset, the rewiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that that end of the rubber band we pushed away, it comes back. And, body, and then the body can say, oh, that was third grade. Well, that was 1964. That was yesterday. And once that happens, then it's just, <laughs> I think Sarah, no, I don't remember who it was, because I don't record in my mind what happens in sessions. Um, but somebody said, they put, whatever you said, it was in the past tense. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my dad. Once upon a time, I don't know. And that's when it goes away, when you recognize, oh, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think what um, Lula is saying about EMDI, which is, I think it stands for eye movement desensitization mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And it's when, when you're thinking about something, if somebody yeah. asks you about something in the, in the past, people's eyes almost always go to a specific direction uh, no, to it? access their memory right. of it. It's the sequence of re, uh, yeah. reorganizing the way yeah. you relate to the memory with eye movement. Like you really oh, okay. Up yeah. here in a particular sequence. Okay. Yes. It's, it's quite interesting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I firmly believe in doing what works. So this might not work for everything. <laughs> You know, it's not, you know, I, 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 I go get other work done on me that's not like this. I'm not against massage. I just know it's only in the last two weeks. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I don't get them. Any more questions? Can you say something about dreams? Because I think yeah. dreams are connected. Um, I remember when you released me first time, when you released, I didn't know exactly what it was that had been released. And then I had a dream, which... Uh -huh basically told me 
gave me the reminded me and I and I dreamt about an old boy friend and that memory was oh my god you know that's what had been relieved how does that how does that work do you think um I I've noticed that my dreams help me resolve just an easy way of dealing things and maybe being conscious yeah it's just, like if there's things I don't know how to deal with them I just go sleep on them take a nap so your subconscious mind is bubbling up for you yeah okay. that's one kind of dream I think have the same experience but without doing the wing release a few times in my life where like I dreamt and I thought oh um, oh yeah oh, okay it's okay now that's yeah. good it's a great day that's great but the dreams mm -hmm. simply resolve like once blah 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 we're ready to let go of without mm -hmm. actively consciously thinking about it mm -hmm. the body of these information we don't have dreams but if it's very too deep I don't think our dreams mm -hmm. but I don't know I don't know, sometimes I wake up real nervous for no apparent reason, except that I was, must have been dreaming, and I'm kind of like, oh, like yeah. that. You know, I'm not like much of an anxious person, but that after a dream, sometimes I'm like nervous throughout the whole day. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just don't have much of that dream, but except yeah. my own experience of, yeah, like I've felt my dreams resolve things that? after. Like, now that you mentioned it, I think <laughs> since, doing, <laughs> since doing the training, um, I've had quite a few dreams where I've had conversations with people where everything was cool. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I, I hadn't put the two together, but then probably a connection actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. All right, any more questions? Okay. Sorry I got so hot in here. I didn't know how to work the heaters. <laughs> uh, it's not just me, right? Oh, nice, to <laughs> nice to be warm. <laughs> That freeze now. Good. Well, uh, there are slots available tomorrow for the wing release party. Like, come to one. Or come during the week. You're coming in the morning. So, <laughs> we'll work it out. I think noon or one or something. And, um, oh, I, I have to come early. I can't come now. Be inshecked at 12. What's that? I've got to be inshecked in Mallet at 12. How far is that? I don't know. About oh. half an hour to post now. Yeah. Can she come at 11 tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks. Okay. I might be tired, also. I might be tired too. I, I, sure I, I won't reject you. I'll be there. The wing release party a week from tomorrow. Okay, sweet. Yeah, okay, a whole week. And everybody who volunteered, I hope I see you later in the week. <laughs> Let me know how, how your week goes. Good. If I don't see you, then I'll see you next time I come, hopefully. Which so I'm having a baby in release in theory. Yay. Well, might be late, might be early, but they and, yeah, he's good. and uh it just I might be a little wrapped up for a while before I can come back. Mm -hmm. Not surprised. So, not surprised. <laughs> yeah. So six months to a year, I don't know, I don't know. But it won't be three months at this time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where is it tomorrow? So tomorrow it's happening at the studio the frequency medicine center everything else happens in here <laughs> what what time two o'clock yeah yeah two o'clock <clears throat> two o'clock due to my jet lag it's <laughs> perfect oh. <laughs> yes brian i'm having a, a personal clearing with you okay. and also i'm joining one of the wing release the later one okay so i i'd be happy to volunteer as an intern but would that be too much for me with the the two with the wing release and the private session is your wing release tomorrow uh no it's monday okay and then but well, which wing release party are you coming Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's sorry. That my private session is on Monday, and the wing release is. Is it tomorrow? It's on the ninth. The ninth. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's probably okay. <laughs> the thing is, if nothing's bubbled up to your shoulders, if they, if like you clear out and then there's nothing up there, then my interns are going to be like, oh, "There's nothing here," <laughs> <laughs> which is also a healing. Like Patrick, I know plenty of people. They would go in for like their tenth session, and Patrick would walk around the table a couple of times and say, "Ah, you're healed. There's something I can do." And walk out of the room. Great. So that is also a nice session because yeah. you get your confirmation that you're yeah. done. 
So that might, you know, <laughs> if there's nothing to let go of, at least it was free. <laughs> yeah. So anybody else want to be a guinea pig? Yay! Yay. <laughs> so you can uh, let Siobhan or Kit know. And um, the, the guinea pig sessions are Friday afternoon and also Monday morning. Not this Monday, but the following Monday. And there's, I think, at least at least six slots of the Okay, any, any other questions? Okay, so the best questions always happen after class. So I don't mind. I'm going to ask you great questions. It's just that I might post them online. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>